first thing I want to say about what happened this week with LeBron is shock, disbelief, disappointment. I mean, I'm just being I'm being honest. I watched that video easily ten times the night it came out, if not more. I was as a guy who's now become a huge LeBron fan about everything he does, both on and off the court, I felt like I just got dumped by my girlfriend, man. Like I, I'm ser- like I, I felt crushed because I'm not normally a guy who I'm very anti-politician, and I think a lot of these people are full of shit, and I'm I call them all hypocrites, and that's why I was like, oh my god. LeBron is no different. He's no different at all. He he values money. We're not just talking money. We're talking he wants the billionaire status so much. He's changed his tune. And and that's why I'm crushed. Because what LeBron basically did this week was he said black lives matter, Chinese lives don't. And it's like, dude, you got to keep the same tune for everybody. And that's why I was so disappointed. And somebody that I've learned to really like and enjoy. And as I head into this NBA season, full disclosure, I, I just don't know how I feel. Like, I can still, I think I'm mature enough to separate the guy on the court versus the guy off the court. And I think everybody should do that. I'm not one of those, oh, fuck, LeBron. Like, I can still watch a Lakers game and appreciate greatness on the court. And I think that's important. I think that's important for athletes, musicians, actors. I I think you don't have to agree with somebody's politics. Grow up. You know, know, like, like my dad has that simple mentality on a lot of these liberal actors. It's like, grow up. You don't have to agree with Sean Penn's politics. You can still appreciate how great of an actor he is. And I can do the same with LeBron. I can can say he's a great athlete. Oh, that was a great play. Wow, I love watching him play. But the minute he opens his mouth off the court now about a social justice issue, nah, fam, I'm good. Not not listening anymore. Just not. I, I can love Everything you do on the court, but I don't give a damn off the court. I think it's great all the things he's done, and I'm sure he'll continue to do in the States with these schools for underprivileged kids. That's all great. But y- you lost me, man. You, you, you completely lost. You literally, you bent the knee like that amazing meme that Jay Lloyd, who's been killing it. Shout out to Jay Lloyd. You've been killing the meme game uh, for us here at Dirty Sports, so thank you. You bent the knee, bro, to China. All you had to do was say, I, I'm not discussing this, or I don't want to mess with my money. Dude, I'd respect that. I've said that. I'd 100% respect that. I've said on this show many times, I can't wait to sell out. Pay me. Oh, yeah, I'll endorse that. I'll endorse this. Pay me. I'm being real. I'm being honest. But I'm not sitting on this pedestal. And that's what all these people need to learn. You can't cherry pick social justice issues like that. You just can't do it. And and what's more disconcerting about LeBron is that there's an article. Again, I've been doing a deep dive. There's an article that came out 11 years ago. I posted this on Dirty Sports Twitter tonight. there's There's an ESPN article from May 16th, 2008. It's literally titled LeBron Speaking Out on Darfur, and it talks about the problem with Darfur and Sudan, and this is before the Beijing Olympics, and even I learned something. I guess a lot of what happened in the Sudan, the Chinese were involved with. Like, shady stuff that the Chinese were involved with. But there's a quote here that's absolutely crushing if you're going to stand with LeBron on any of these issues. And let me pull up the quote. This is what LeBron says. James told the reporter, he said, he spent the previous year educating himself about China. This is, by the way, fascinating to me. So if you're following along the story, LeBron this week told everybody he's not educated enough, Tug. Here I have in 
an article from 2008 before the Beijing Olympics. LeBron is telling the reporter he spent the previous year before those Summer Olympics educating himself about China and Chinese history. And now he's saying he doesn't know anything about it. Damn, LeBron. It's tough. It's not a good look. And this is the quote that's just killer. He says, at the end of the day, we're talking about human rights. And people should understand that human rights, that human rights and people's lives are in jeopardy. We're not talking about contracts here. We're talking about money. We're talking about people's Lives being lost, and that means a lot more to me than some money or contract. Where you been, bro? That was 11 years ago. What LeBron, what LeBron basically did was, at that point, his deal, just so everybody knows, his deal with Nike at that point was for $90 million. LeBron was already making hundreds of millions of dollars. But LeBron wanted to go next level rich the quote-unquote fuck you money, right? Billionaire status. And for that, he threw that quote out the window, that ideology of caring more about human rights over money and contracts. And by the way, I'm not one to say, I don't know what I do in this situation, but I do think this much about myself. I do think if I had achieved that status of hundreds of millions of dollars, What's the deal? Like, I said this last episode. How much money do you need to make, man? Just be, just be real. If LeBron was like, yo, I want to be a billionaire. Fuck everybody in China. I'd be like, okay. He's he being honest. He's being real. And another thing, too, which is important for all of us to know in this situation. Dude, there's ramifications of who you do business with. All of us. We've all, I think every one of us has probably put ourselves in some sort of predicament at some point in our lives, and it could come back on you. And just be wary of that. And that's, that's what's happened here with LeBron and with the NBA. And I, I just, I was just in shock, Tug. I just couldn't believe. I remember. I mean, I remember when we were texting about it. Like, it was, it was definitely, I mean, not only you. All of people on social media, everyone, and I and I haven't heard, I haven't heard. You know, look, I, I watch PTI. Yeah, like Mike Wilbon is the protector of the shield as as much as anyone. Also, did not said so, you know support LeBron in this move. Like, I what I what I what I was fascinated by was the, the some of the mechanics of this. For instance, by which I mean. There was a couple days of silence before the athletes were asked to speak on this. LeBron is connected to Nike. Nike, he's obviously concerned about Nike's money in China, his money for himself. Nike's some of the greatest PR. NBA is a PR machine. Why are people not huddling to create a statement? That we know LeBron's going to speak. We all know we're waiting for LeBron. Why isn't there some way where he create something where he could say i believe in free speech but also straddle the line of like i i, I want to support i'd like to see some change in the chinese government but i also you know have been here for 15 years i have love for the chinese people yes you know I mean, there's got to be a way to craft this statement well what you just said yeah. would, would have been such a better statement yeah that's what i'm that's kind of what i'm surprised by uh, he couldn't oh, do you agree the, with the, this? The, the move was the move somewhere somewhere in there in the huddle uh whatever between adam silver because you, you saw this in david miniman's report or article today that like he was and i, and I get this point of him saying I, uh, let me let me just you, you know you know where i'm going yeah he's like i wish that daryl morey would have waited till we were out of china before he expressed his feelings which I think there is some validity to. Like I think w people don't know what happens. Like people, you know, the Chinese government. As someone who's lived in Russia for a few months, I, it's scary. It can be scary. Yeah. And so these guys are going for a few days. It's scary to see things change that, you, that go differently than you plan. So I understand that idea. I do too. But to go completely astray from like that intention, and, and not not make that point, but also say I, you know, and stand on all the things that you said for the last 10, 12 years, and, and, sh and not only say, but show, is just uh, was surprising to so many people, including myself. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. I, 
I don't have a problem with LeBron saying maybe Maury should have waited on that tweet. Until we're, outside, until we're back in the States. I actually totally get that. That's that's the part that I get. But yeah, what what LeBron's what he's not getting is you've just you've stood on this fucking soapbox, dude, and 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 you've you've been the uh, more than a basketball player, you know, more than an athlete, more than a shut up and dribble person. I've agreed with all that. I have no problem with you pushing social justice and a positive agenda. I think that's great. But you can't just suddenly go dark on awful atrocities. There, I'm not that knowledgeable in China, but I do know this much. I do know people don't have rights. I do know 1.5 million Muslim Chinese people are put in camps. This isn't, you know, this isn't conspiracy. These are facts, man. These are some awful facts, and I get it. Again, we, we all do business with China, all of us. We're all guilty. But, dude, just... Just have some honesty across the board. And, and that's where, you know, he lost me. And you brought up a great point. I usually don't really care what other people say. But from a from a social standpoint, I was curious. I, I started just digging across tweets. Left-wing people, right-wing people, center people. Dude, it was universal. From media to sports media to politicians to just the you know the random sports fan, every single person was bothered by this, and, and that's I did a tweet. It was a joke saying LeBron's the goat because he's unified basically everybody against him. It's it's wild though, he really has, and I don't think a lot of people have the maturity to differentiate the on the court LeBron versus what he's doing off the court now. I don't think a lot of people like me are going to be able to watch a game and be like, wow, that was an amazing play. They're all going to be like, fuck LeBron. But he dug his own grave for that. I mean, I mean, seriously, you're, you're a smart guy, Tug. How bad is his image right now? Like, how does this change? Uh, you know, it's, it is very interesting to, to think about because you're right. Like, the next time he does try to get on his soapbox and, and stand up for um, a social platform that needs to be, you know, ha- have a microphone held to it, how much are people going to be l- willing to listen or, or, or say, like, what, 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 what are you really in it for? You know, why are you supporting this? So I do think, you know, his – the authenticity of LeBron's brand has taken a, a, a definite hit. And it's amazing to me to see all the, all the, the goodwill that you've built up basically from the, uh, the announcement or whatever, whatever it was called. The decision. The decision. From the decision, people forget about that. People crushed LeBron for that, and he also was doing it for charity. You know, he was like raising money for the Boys and Girls Club, I think. He was got crushed for that. Was still doing it for a good cause. Built all the goodwill back up, and then this, in a in a, it is a guy who's you know extremely you know the more than an athlete is a, the moniker for for him and, and uninterrupted, a company with which I work or, or work with. Um, so, so to like, and you and you you mentioned this in the rundown, like, it, the 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 commenting and the opinions of LeBron's actions and words were so swift on social media, and he hasn't even s- doubled. He like he didn't c- correct course. He kind of went on Twitter and like and he said, "Hey, let me just clarify my point." It wasn't a point about the the. It wasn't a point about. You know, I, you know what I. My my main point is this: I believe in free speech. I believe in human rights. It was Maury, Daryl Morey should have waited till we get out of the country. Um, and he, so guys, he knew he created a storm. For those who didn't follow it closely enough, he sent those tweets mid preseason game that he wasn't playing. LeBron knew he created such a firestorm. He was tweeting during the game. Because it was such a disaster on Monday. What you got, Twerks? That's funny, actually. I didn't, I didn't know that. He was tweeting mid-game just to, to save face. Uh, no, we got a comment from Stanga that uh, I think is worth exploring. Is Space Jam 2 now destined to be a flop? No way. You know why? He, he did uh, – Stanga, great question. And I, I firmly – I really believe this. 
you know, obviously Nike money is real in China. Like I think you saw in McMenamin's article, the sales for Nike in the past few years have been flat domestically, but exploded in yeah. China. And if you haven't, let me hop in real quick. If you haven't read it, it's a great article it published yesterday. It details the behind the scenes of what went down during their whole trip to China. And obviously, like so much of Hollywood business is about overseas sales. And I think they 100%, I think this is part of it. I think they recognized, you know, Space Jam will do $150 million domestically, but it could do a, a, a billion overseas. Um, so I don't think, I think, I think part, part of this, of like the, the reasons why LeBron decided to choose his business reasons over his philosophical reasons is that Space Jam's a real thing. Like that's so why I think he's. I think he actually went out there to save Space Jam. But that goes back to my point. How much money do you need, bro? A- and again, I don't think I'm sitting on a soapbox saying that to him. It's but I, I just to me it comes to a certain point in your life, dude. How much money do you need? I, I you're talking to Mr. Capitalism over here. But at a certain point, like like I, I just don't, dude. You made it. You made it, LeBron. You came from nowhere in Akron. I mean, you saw in, in the article they talk about you know guys, you know, nobody. It's not even LeBron. Guys have million dollar deals in China just yeah. to go a million dollar appearance fees, just to go somewhere. Yeah, get canceled. Um, and and you guys talked about this before, but like it's not just. I mean, obviously LeBron is the guy that we all look to first to kind of make a statement, but. Steve Kerr is a is a guy that we look to to make a statement. Canceled. Greg Popovich. Canceled. The only one that came out strong the other night was the guy. It's a guy many people see as a villain. Enos Cantor. Enos Cantor. Enos Cantor. The great Celtic. He came out strong, and he tweeted this. This is the same night. This is obviously directed at LeBron. Haven't seen or talked to my family five years. Jailed my dad. My siblings can't find jobs. Revoked my passport. International arrest warrant. My family can't leave the country. Got death threats every day. Got attacked, harassed. Tried to kidnap me in Indonesia. Freedom is not free. And then he actually wrote, which I read, he wrote a a great op-ed in the Boston Globe about his experience, about what he's gone through, and again, he doesn't mention LeBron's name once in the article. I suggest everybody read it. But it's 100% a dig. It's, it's 100% a dig at LeBron and all these guys. Dude, that's my thing, man. He, he, and he also goes on later to tweet, I'm more than an athlete, which is a very oh, bald I didn't see that. Tweet. Wow. Uh, yeah. So, he, I mean, he doesn't mention LeBron again by name, but he does basically. You know what's been interesting about the LeBron thing is – you like I said, all sides are going after him, and I think a lot of times we get tribalistic and we want to defend our own. As sad as it may be, it that's what happens. The white people want to defend the white people. The black people want to defend the black people. The Asian people want to defend the Asian people. I haven't really seen that here, man. And it's been interesting to see. Take like former guest of the show Ryan Grant, former Green Bay Packer running back. He commented on our Instagram, and we had a, a quick couple comment exchange of he's like this is crazy this shows how much control china has over us and it is it's not just lebron it's it's not just the movie business it's guys they own us man like it's it's a sad reality we are china's bitch all of us and i i don't have a solution to that i'm not smart enough to that but it's not a good situation right now as far as the economic side, right? I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you, too. I actually think, like, LeBron can do whatever he wants. Like, if he, if he just would have come out and said, you know, if he would have borrowed from Michael Jordan and said, uh, you know, the Chinese buy shoes, too. Can we, can we explain that quote? A lot of people don't know that quote. It's a great quote from Jordan. Well, th- th- back in the day, they wanted, they wanted Michael Jordan to be more politically involved. And 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 then specifically, there w- there was a a Democrat in North Carolina who wanted 
excuse me, it wanted Michael's endorsement. And that's when he said the quote. Which is Republicans buy his shoes too. Like, I'm not going to endorse any Republican, any Democrat. They all buy shoes. Yeah. And to be, to be honest, I think it's a great quote. It's an honest quote. And I think that's the thing. Like, if, if we would have said, like, I, you know, I'm just protecting my money, more people would probably be like, oh, man, that's, that sucks. But, like. It's, it's real. Yeah. It's real. You're protecting your money. I would have no problem with LeBron if he said that. Okay. He wants to be a billionaire. Cool. But, again, you can't chastise. You can't go on these, on these rants chastising the problems we have here in America. And we have a ton. And, I, and that doesn't downplay the inequality and all the problems we have in America. I, we have a ton. But you can't just then be like, that, eh, whatever, China. I don't know enough about that. Like all these guys. They're, they're all, at the end of the day, you're a hypocrite. And I don't know if I want to go this far, but I think a lot of them are just cowards. And I, I would like to think I wouldn't be that way. And again, I don't know because I'm not in that situation. But I do know they've all made millions already. And that's the point I want to keep harping on. It's like, you've already made millions, Steve Kerr, LeBron, James Harden. You guys have all made tons of millions. What's the worst that can happen to you? You don't become a billionaire? Your, your kids are set for life. Your kids' kids are set for life. Fucking money, man. There's a reason they say it's the root of all evil. I want to do one quick... I'm excited about this. I'm going to do one quick ex excerpt from a graduation speech of one of the great writers, American writers of the last 60 years, David Foster Wallace. Passed away a few years from suicide, unfortunately, but uh, one, one of my heroes. Wrote a graduation speech at Kenyon College. I want to say... I'll look up the date, 2005. Ohio called, School. Called... Uh, this is water, but he basically says this. It was, it's a, it's, it's, I encourage you to go either watch it or read it at some point. But he basically says this. Because here's something else that's weird but true. In the day-to-day -day trenches of adult life, there is actually no such thing as, ath as atheism. There's no such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what we worship. And the compelling reason for maybe choosing some sort of God or spiritual type thing to worship, be whoever it is, is that pretty much anything else you worship, anything else you worship will eat you alive. If you worship money and things, if they are where you tap your real meaning in life, then you will never have enough, never feel you have enough. It's the tre truth. Worship your body and beauty and sexual allure, 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 and you will always feel ugly, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, like, that's... It's a great, it's a great speech, and I think like that's something that, to me, shows true colors in this statement, in this in this moment. It's like we can all, it shows people's true colors, and like we can go out there and tr say we want to help the world, but we only get to choose one. We have a Sophie's choice. Yeah. What do we choose? It's very profound. I mean, it's true. And and again, I think it is easy because we're not in his shoes. I'm not, I'm not saying this is an easy predicament because we're not there. I, I do always try to put myself, but again, I just keep harping on it. How much goddamn money do you need? And, and the last thing I'll say, and I know you want to get on its works, is that, again, I am baffled by, by Nike and, NBA and the NBA not powwowing and giving LeBron something to use that could have protected all entities. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you, what, you got the last thing, Twerks? 